We've got stories about superheroes, grungy music in the 90s, the Western genre, and some good old supernatural shenanigans. Welcome to Number One Best Comic. I'm your host, VM Campos. This is the series where I show you a great issue number one from my collection. This time we're talking about Penthouse Men's Adventure Comics, number one, published in 1995. Now, spoiler alert, this episode is NSFW, so don't watch this at work. Definitely watch it at home with the lights low and a nice glass of wine. And second spoiler alert, we will be going through the various pages of this comic, so if you don't want the story spoiled, you gotta get it for yourself. So on with the show. Yep, Penthouse uh, Publishers, the ones that published... Uh, adult magazines since the 60s dipped their toe into the comics market in the 90s. Penthouse Men's Adventure Comics went for eight issues between 1995 and 1996. They were bi-monthly. And they were the sister publication of Penthouse Comics, with an X, of course. That one went from 1994 to 1998 for 36 issues. I don't quite know what the big difference is between those two books. They were both anthologies written and drawn by some big names in the world of comics, but just with a sexier bent. But by 1998, Penthouse Comics was no more. The comics crash had happened and wiped out a bunch of the upstart publishers. This cover proclaims the illustrated pulp magazine for men. April, May, 95, 495. Now what's interesting is that this is the direct edition, the comic shop version of it, because there was also a magazine newsstand edition, and this is the comic shop version. It's actually the size of a regular comic book, whereas the magazine is magazine-sized. And then we see some of the creative team over here, McGuire, Pearson, Carbone, Texiera, and Barry, with an eye-catching, beautiful Boris Vallejo cover, depicting some of the characters inside the book, but in Boris's amazing style. So we got some couple of superheroes versus a Dracula over here, and reminding us not to be sold to anyone under 18. So here's your last chance. This is the tamest part of the book. You've been warned. All right, so Hajime Sorayama was a big name, I remember, back in the 90s with his amazing artwork. Very realistic style. We have here an ad for lithographs. The indicia of the comic. Pause that. Read it for yourself. See if you see any names that you recognize. And then here's our various stories. So then we also get a thumbnail view of the various stories so that maybe you can see here's the art that we're about to enjoy and uh, maybe jump to the one that you really, really want to enjoy. Creative team over here. The first story, action figures. So the style here is pretty cartoony. It sort of reminds me of the Batman Adventures style, that sort of angular style of art. Interesting page compositions, character designs. There's various amounts of action. There's got some very scary Dracula guy over here. Close up of the mouth. Uh, the art is pretty cool overall. It's got this, as I've said, this cartoony style that I enjoy. And in a relatively short amount of time, we get action, introduction of the characters. That's a pretty cool shot of one of the characters right there. I want a headband that says badass while I smoke my cigar. And then when you're hanging out at the uh, headquarters, of course, you've got to hang out bottomless. How else will you probably be able to train? And this is the original artist's rendition of the characters where we have here the Vallejo version of the characters. Now, no offense to this artist, of course, but I would have loved to have seen a full story in, in the Vallejo style. But obviously this one piece took a long time, so to make a whole sequential thing would have taken even longer. We would have gotten one page at a time, probably. Next up we have Generation Sex, Episode 1. And this is by Tex, so Marvel Comics artist, with this photorealistic style. This is just some amazing art. I love all styles of comic art, but this realistic style always has a special place in my heart because comic books are often this sort of very simplified style of art. And when you take these characters and make them real, that's pretty cool. Now, this is not superhero enough for me at the moment. So I think they can have a very loose definition of what can be in this magazine, the illustrated pulp magazine for men. But if you take amazing art like this, I guess you can kind of overlook the plot. Anyway, there's 
text art on that one. It's, it's shorter than the first story, and then see you next month. Here it shows, of course, as I said, Penthouse Comics was the, the main series. I think I've got a copy of that issue number one somewhere. Maybe I've seen that cover so much I think I have it, but I don't... I think I've got that. That's actually an old art from the 70s, I think, so maybe that's why I'm confusing it. I think they repurposed it for the, for the 90s. They also have Omni Comics which is only three issues long. So here they're trying to sell you subscriptions. It's for all ages, Omni Comics, the comic book version of Omni Magazine that was around since the 70s and then self-promoting the men's adventure comics. Hey, there's issue number one right there. Then we have all of these previews for all of these other stories. Pause it, look at them for yourself. Look at the creative teams, the plots and everything. It's kind of an interesting but also boring type of an ad because it's just boxes with text. The only thing that's being shown off is the logo. So each one has a unique logo that catches your attention. Yeah, I want to read Dark Blood. Art by Various and Premiering in Penthouse Comics 95, huh? So it's not even committing to a, sp a specific issue or anything. Just sometime in 95. I guess it did debut eventually because Penthouse Comics lasted until 98. So for the collectability of it all, it's not a lot of books to collect. There's only eight issues of this. Um, the main publication, Penthouse Comics, went up to 36 issues. So there's more books to collect in there with a variety of creators and artists. And again, pause it to look at all of the big names, Alan Davis, that are part of the uh, Penthouse Comics revolution. Little ad for Last Gasp. And then we get to the next story, Slim and None. So this definitely feels like classic... It feels like two things. Classic American Western comics, but also European comics. Because look at this empty space on the top and bottom. That makes me think that this is the, I don't know, A4-sized paper that they use in, in Europe. And I see that often in books that are uh, reprinted in the U.S. There's all of this empty space on the top and bottom just because their paper is different. It's in the metric system or something. And so we have a gunslinger. We've got a nun. We've got the Old West. Vengeance, and this is uh, part one of the series. We'll check in on those wacky kids on the next issue. Here we have NBM with some Milo Manara work. I remember getting to college in the late 90s and getting a really fast internet connection and finding the Usenet news groups where you can get every single comic you ever wanted. And so many you didn't even know existed. I learned a lot that semester. All right, so here we have another example of this uh, realistic style. L-A-X. And so we got a realistic style with adventures in the Valley, Los Angeles, California, trying to make a movie or TV shows or something. Very realistic style. I wonder if they had models for the various panels. Seems pretty creative overall. One day I'll actually read these stories, but it's just cool to even just browse them and absorb the artwork. Here we go over to Salem, episode one. Nobody knows, nobody sees. A very moody, realistic style, some supernatural action happening. Look at that cat screeching, meow. Well, my dear, I'll come if I can, Magnus. Nice panel layouts. Notice we have black gutters rather than the white gutters that we see in the other stories. That definitely then gives it a, a spookier, more eerie style to it all, to the shenanigans that are happening here. In the end, kind of gives me a bit of an X-Files vibe to it all. After all, that was a big, big show at this time period. They had their own comics, of course, t published by Topps Comics. And that's episode one. All right, then we go over here to Hurricane. And this uh, is basically the uh, Femme Force style of lady superheroes with their adventures. Really nice facial expressions. I think that's a great indicator of strong cartooning skills, if you can really capture emotions. Anatomy and all of that, of course, is important, but expressions like this really sell, sell you on the action uh, what's, and what's going on. Kind of looks like Space Ghost over here. And if this looks familiar, like might have happened in some other comic book, maybe this came out with it first. This is a one and done story. More ads, more previews. Founding Fathers, this ain't no tea party. Coming soon from Penthouse Comics. George was a loner. Tom wanted justice. Ben couldn't shoot straight. And Burr, Burr was just plain crazy. Founding Fathers. 
seems pretty hilarious. But you would, of course, assume that Ben Franklin was the high-tech geek of them all. Oh, and then here's a, here's an early uh, Japanese animation uh, ad. So what do we have? We have Flare, Angel of Darkness, F3, Magic Twilight, Adventure Kid, Cutie Honey. And the prices here, these were outlandish. $34.00. Volume 1. Usually this had one episode, maybe two. Yeah, I remember this back in the day. One, oh yeah, and Orotsuke Doji. That one was earth-shattering. $99 for four episodes. So that's four episodes. Four, four episodes for $100. Wow. Anime was expensive back in the day. It was so niche. Now you buy one DVD box set, 20 bucks, and it's got the whole 500 episodes. Ah, uh, the good old days. So over here we have the origin of Miss Adventure. Again, I, I just really like these expressions and the variety of body types, unique character designs and the like. Yeah, it's a sexy superhero book. And nowadays you could say, oh, it's been done. But this was, again, back from 1995. This was much more cutting edge, much more risque. And here's Penthouse trying to get a piece of that pie of the speculator market of comic books are going to make us all rich, just like Action Comics number one. And it didn't work out at all, unfortunately. But there were so many publishers that were trying their hand at the world of comics. Okay, so yeah, they, they reversed Boris's signature there. But then it's like that backwards. So which is the correct way, I wonder now? Is this the correct view? Or is this the correct view? And oh, look at that. They also took out the little nuclear symbol right there, the little cutie mark right there. Are there any other things that are different? Yeah, I just wonder what, what that's all about. And so don't just read Penthouse Comics, live them. So you can call these, uh, these uh, phone numbers here and uh, talk about them. Talk about the various plots and art, I'm sure. Let's see, what are the prices? All 800 numbers are $4.95 per minute. Visa MasterCard must be 18. Sponsored by PET, Penthouse Entertainment Troop. And then we have here a preview for issue number seven of Penthouse Comics. Legally distinct Bat Lady character here. <laughs> With art by Mobius, Soidum, Moro, Geiger, and Aspidi. You can get your back issues over here. I'm currently on a... Uh, Trying to grab a couple of eBay listings for number one of Penthouse Comics. There's also a sent second printing with 14 extra pages, uh, seven, seven fifty there, but a little bit more expensive nowadays. See if I can get a good price for first or second print of that. Might be cool to then include in another episode later on. And at the end, we've got paper dolls. So cut them out, style them to yourself, <laughs> and put them on your desk for all to enjoy. Uh, none of these are valid anymore, I'm sure. But back in the day, this is how we communicated, kids. It was all about mail order. The internet was a brand new and scary thing, so you still relied on the good old post office. In the end, we get a preview of what's coming up next month, the latest episodes of Action Figures, Slim and None, and Hurricane. And then we've got here an ad for Xanthus. Altitude with attitude. Shoes that are kind of kind of glowing. Definitely want those to climb some mountains. And then on the back cover, this is amazing. The Crystal Vision from Casio. A television in your pocket. Big screen TV, now available in a slightly smaller scale. Wow, the future is going to be amazing. And that was the first issue of Penthouse Men's Adventure Comics, the illustrated pulp magazine for men, published way back in 1995. What did you think? What was your favorite story in the comic? Which was your favorite art? Which was your favorite plot? Did these... did they even have a plot? And tell me how much you love this amazing Boris Vallejo cover. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like, comment, share, subscribe, ring the bell, battle the Minotaur. Tell me what comics you'd like me to cover in the future. If you really liked the video, don't forget to go over to my Patreon, patreon.com slash vmcompost to pledge to keep the channel going. Or if you want to stay in YouTube, click the join button right here in YouTube to get some perks and keep the channel going. You can also give a thanks, which is a nice little monetary contribution to the channel. I would really appreciate it. This has been VM Compost, and I'll see you in the next episode of Number One Best Comic.